Today, we're gonna to find out one thing, if we can turn a room like this into a room like this. Using an oscilloscope and this, a 40 kilohertz ultrasonic transmitter. Stick around and find out how. In most offices, it's important to have a quiet space. So you can take a minute for personal calls, so you can speak with a mental health first aider, or just take a minute to yourself. With these rooms comes the challenge of sound insulation and making sure these conversations aren't heard across the office. So we have the room, all we need is to gather up some equipment and get going. To test the sound insulation, we need to be creative. We need to produce a sound wave from inside the room and capture and measure the signals from outside the room to assess the insulation of different materials and interfaces into the room, such as vents, doors, seals, and the already insulated walls. For producing the sound wave, we're gonna be using a 40 kilohertz transmitter, which is usually used to non-intrusively find gaps and cracks in gas mains pipes. Using an ultrasonic signal has many advantages for leak detection. Being high frequency and short wavelength means it's ideal for propagating out small cracks and highly directional in comparison to lower frequencies, which will be a lot harder to detect and read. For the data acquisition, we've got a Picascope 3418E 4-channel 500MHz oscilloscope. This will collect the data and allow us to measure the peak power received off the ultrasonic 40kHz sensor. We can use a TA329 ultrasonic sensor to measure the received ultrasonic waves with the BNC interface, and we can plug this straight into a scope and we can scan along potential leaky areas in the room like a dog sniffing in an airport. Now we have our equipment, we'll go back to past James to see how the testing went. many hours later. So this is the new HR room and just outside we have the main offices. So people will be on their keyboards and people in here are trying to have meetings. So let's try and combat that kind of noise gap. This is the equipment we're using. Let's have a quick dive in. This is Pigscope 7 uh, running with the Pigscope 3000E. And what we've got is our sensor receiving this ultrasonic signal and displaying it on the screen. We've got our little ultrasonic transmitter right here. So they're right next to each other and you can see that this signal is at its maximum. What we need to do is change it to spectrum mode and we should be able to see the 40 kilohertz signal right there. So we can quickly whack on a measurement. We can measure the frequency at peak and amplitude at peak. And what we'll do is we'll constrain it between rulers as well and then we're getting around minus 30 dBU currently. We'll take our transmitter and we're gonna put it right here because I think this point is gonna be a really big point of focus for lots of transmitted ultrasonics. We'll take this setup, we'll take it outside, measure around the room and see what kind of readings we get. Right, so that is the window. And then we'll go to here. One of the areas with the noted large transmission strength is a single pane glass window on the entrance to the room. With our testing, it seemed to do absolutely nothing when it came to insulating the ultrasonic sound waves. This could be due to the thin, dense properties of the single pane glass, allowing the sound waves to propagate through rather than reflected or absorbed. The proper solution to this problem would be double glazed glass with an air gap in between, or removing the window for a thick and insulated wooden door. Having multiple layers of different density materials and air, it should increase the reflection and absorption of the sound wave, ideally reducing the transmitted energy from the other side. But all we have is cardboard. Once we stick this on the backside and measure the transmitted energy, there should be a noticeable difference between that and the current glass. So let's give it a go. <laughs> This is a really good masking tape. Thanks, 3M. Maybe we should... Uh, you ready? But let's see how this works in reducing our around minus 90 decibels. So we are getting a little bit. 
but we are getting a bit more out there. So we are getting a little bit of signal through the single pane and the cardboard, but if that was double pane, it'll probably do much better. We are still getting a lot of noise through this uh, crack in the door, so some kind of seal would be perfect for eliminating the rest of that noise. Back to you in the studio. Now, after all that testing, we can see how well ultrasonic signals can be used to measure small air gaps within walls, ceilings, and door frames, and how a picoscope can measure and utilize all this data. We've also found what materials can cause issues with ultrasonic sound waves and what works well to insulate them. But if you're doing this to reduce voice travel, it's always best to confirm sound insulation using real world voices. And the human hearing range from around 200 to 20 kilohertz in case some room materials react differently to the lower frequencies. So after doing all this testing, we've collated our results and fed them back to the HR team. So hopefully they can make some changes and successfully make this room super insulated and finally get off our backs. Backs, 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 backs.